All right, so let's do a quick review of all the stuff that we covered in that section. Now, we covered quite a bit of stuff, but we have a, now a procedural ramp model. You can use all the sliders and stuff that we've been promoting up to our HDA's uh, user interface, and you can change the shape of it, and all the UVs get updated. Um, it's really cool. All right, I highly recommend you know starting to look at you know modeling this way. I, I enjoy it thoroughly, and it's, it's really good for reuse, especially if you need to create lots of variations. Um, highly recommend it. Anyway, let's go and talk about the next thing. So we learned some procedural techniques. You know, we talked about group by range. We learned how to join different curves together to create the shapes that we want. Uh, we learned how to use the new sweep node. Uh, we learned a bunch of the cool uh, procedural techniques that are used quite often in this process. And now there's there's lots more, but you know that's what comes with uh, practice. So I highly recommend just learning what the nodes do and the the data that they output and you know mix and match them together and see what kind of results you get all right so then we also took a look at uh, creating, creating clean procedural uvs all right now i highly recommend also doing it this way too so you don't end up with a ton of shells now you know substance painter and uh, mixer 2020 they do a great job of you know using the triplanar texturing or the what, what mixer calls bo box projection um, you know the original term is triplanar projection all right but I still like to at least have my uh, my UVs laid out uh, in an organized way. There are some cases where, yes, you will just throw down a UV unwrap node and create a bunch of shells, um, but this is a great way to do this. All right, cool. So with that, let's move on to the next section and uh, get a high-res model created and take care of our bakes.